Shogun Nogera Part 3. Guys, this one has really kind of gone quietly, and this is like a hardcore fan's dream fight in some ways. I mean, this is a send-off for Little Nog. He said, uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to ride off into the sunset. And what a way to go out. I mean, you, you got two legendary fighters in Nog and Shogun, and they fought twice before. They were very interesting fights. I mean, you've got these two black belts in jujitsu, but they went out, they were, this fight was, was a fist of cuffs, both of them. And now they're going to do part three, which really is very appropriate. And it's tough to take two guys and put them in a co-main event spot, particularly when there's no contendership on the line, because one, they're just not in that place in their career anymore. But one of them's even said, hey, forget a contender. I'm done after this. It's very tough to feature them, but it's a very, rare opportunity that you get true, two true legends within the same weight class that have a history with each other that are willing to walk out there a third time. And there really is a special moment on this and good for Little Nog. Little Nog has been a walking injury. I mean, his own body has just worked against him more times in his career. And it does seem as though, look, if you could go out there one more time and get one more memory, it might be a good one. It might not be quite as good as you want, but if you can get one more memory, I think that's something that we can get behind and support, and particularly when it's against Shogun. And the time that they fought, their first two, was a different time in Nog's career. Nog, just to remind you guys, had aspirations in 2012. And if I'm wrong, it was in 2008, the way time has gone by. But he, wa no, it would have been 2012. He wanted to be the representative for Brazil for the Olympic Games for boxing. And the Olympics were going to Rio and he was pursuing this process and he had even won the Brazilian national title. Now, I'm not astute enough on the process in Brazil for what it takes to make one of their senior world teams, whether it be a world team or the Olympic Games every four years. I just don't know enough about it. But I can tell you within America, if you win the Nationals, you're now the top guy. You are now looked at as the guy to beat for that representation on the team. I can tell you when the Olympics were in Rio in 2012, he was not the representative. So I don't know what happened there, but he did do a number of boxing matches. And he never lost. I was following him online. He had the gloves. He had the Hager. These were amateur boxing matches, but it also spoke to the way that he was uh, translating that hard work and those skills into mixed martial arts. All of a sudden, he became Mr. Stand-Up. He's throwing jabs and hooks and uppercuts and crosses. He, his footwork was a little better. His hands and his rolls and his movement, it was just a little better. He was very sharp, very sharp at boxing. I was hoping that he would make that Olympic team, I'd have somebody to cheer for. I wanted to see how far he could go. And that's why I tell you, I followed his matches. And he won, and he only had a handful. He had two or three and, and four at the most, but he won them all. Now, I do bring that time to you because if he's not working on that now, what is he working on? Has he gone back to his roots? Is he looking to just purely grapple with Shogun? That would never be a good idea. It's always a good idea to have a little mixture of everything. Shogun is for sure qualifies in that pool of complete fighter. He can do it all. He can punch you. He can kick you. He can go all night long. He can submit you. He can defend you. He can wrestle. I mean, Shogun is a very complete old school shoot box. Shoot box guys just knew how to do everything from day one. They never focused on just Muay Thai or just grab. On day one, it, it was very complete. So I think that this fight is appropriate. I think the placement on the card is respectful. And I do think there is something very special to see when you can get two legends together, particularly when one is saying, this is my final. This is my last hurrah. I'm walking away. This is where the cowboy rides away. Okay, great. You've got my attention. I will stop what I'm doing out of respect, and I am going to tune in. I wish them both well. I don't have a dog in this fight, but there is something for nostalgia's sake that compels me to see what happens. Little Nog and Shogun Part 3. This one seemed as though you could apply logic in advance and know it was going to go to Shogun. Simple logic says Shogun has been busy. He has been fighting, he is doing training camps, he is making weight. Little Nog has been out 
because he was injured, which also tells us not only has he not been in training camps, not doing it and not making it, it means he can't even practice, right? So you got a guy who won the first two contests. They're going to go in and do the same thing with whole new testing in place, which greatly does change how this match is potentially going to go, which again is going to favor Shogun. That's not really what happened. I got to tell you, I thought Little Nog won that fight. He did not win the decision. I thought Little Nog won that fight. And another thing with Little Nog was very fun for me as a fan in 2012. Olympic Games, going to Rio, and Little Nog out of nowhere goes, I want to be the Olympic representative for Brazil in boxing. And all of a sudden just starts entering, like, I think it was heavyweight. If I'm wrong, it was light heavyweight. But I believe it was even the heavyweight division boxing. And he was doing great. I was following his career. He didn't lose. I want to say he had four fights was all. He won them all. And one of those was actually the Brazilian National Tournament. I don't know what the hierarchy and the architecture in Brazil to make an Olympic team is, but I can tell you here in the States, if you win the Nationals, you're the top seed going into the trial. So he was one of the guys, and then something happened and he didn't do it. But I only bring you that story because his hands are very good. And the Nogueira brothers are so legendary for their jiu-jitsu, both of them. Anytime you have a brother and you're both out and you're both badasses, you can kind of double, you, you can kind of double your esteem in half the time. He goes and wins, you go and win. Uh, okay, the audience is all confused. You, you both are just really good. And, but he had good hands. Little Nog had really good hands. But when he got away from this and did not follow through and pursue that Olympic dream, I interpreted that to mean that, well, he got away from his hands and he was dealing with all sorts of injuries, right? Whether it was the back or the thigh or the shoulder. And I, I'm left to draw the conclusion. So perhaps you did too. That he must have hurt something upper body. Something that stopped him from seeing that boxing dream through. Something that uh, parlayed over to his MMA. And that's why we hadn't seen him in a period of time, which would draw you to the final analysis. That he wasn't very good with the hands anymore. Something that he couldn't do. Wrong. Everything's wrong. He looked great with the hands. He was slipping Shogun. And Shogun warned him before this fight. He said, look, I, I know about your hands. But you know about my kicks. And Nog conceded. He goes, I, he, this guy's a good kicker. But Nog appeared to be ready for it. I mean, he would turn his body sideways at times. He would absorb those, those kicks. Boom, he was come back. He was throwing some shots. Round one was very close. Uh, I thought Nog won it. Round two was not close. Nog did win it. Round three, not, not as close either. It also went to Shogun. So if you can agree with me that two and three, we all know. Now we have to go fight over round one. It looks to me like they fought over round one. They made their decision. I'll just share with you my opinion. Nog won the fight, lost the decision. I will also offer for you a final statement on Nog because he has said this is my final fight. I am done. Win, lose, or draw, I am done. Nog, thank you for the memories. And congratulations on an excellent career.